Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're getting ready for Valentine's Day. We're going to be making a pop-up puppy Valentine's card. We'll be using watercolor paper and watercolors if you have those. Now, if you don't have watercolor paper or watercolors, you could also use just construction paper and crayons, colored pencils, markers, whatever you have around the house. I would recommend, since it's a pop-up card, using a little bit heavier weight paper. So multimedia paper, construction paper, watercolor paper, any of those will work. The other items you're going to want to look for are our basics. Pencil, Sharpie marker, a pair of scissors, and a glue stick. So these items you're going to need on top of your crayons, colored pencils, watercolor, whatever you're going to be using for your decorating today. So gather up your items and meet me back here, and we will begin our project. Well, let's begin our pop-up puppy picture. For this lesson, you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper if you're planning on painting. If you're not gonna be painting, you can just use regular construction paper, or you could also use cardstock if you have heavyweight cardstock paper. You want something that's got a nice thick feel to it so that the picture will pop up and down. A piece of paper out of the printer is not going to work very successfully. So the other items that you should have gathered before we began is a marker, pencil, a pair of scissors, you're gonna need a glue stick, and something for coloring with. Um, you could use crayons, or you could use paint, you could use markers, you could use a combination of both. Now the other thing, before we begin, you might want to look for a colored piece of paper for your background paper once we're finished. Now you don't have to do this, you could just use another an additional piece of white paper behind this, but you might want to use a colored piece of paper. Oh, don't forget some water too if you're planning on painting. So gather up those items and then meet me back here when you are done. Welcome back. Now the first thing we're going to be doing is taking our paper and folding it in half. So I'm going to turn my paper along, horizontal. I'm going to fold it in half from the left side to the right side. And as I'm folding it, I'm just going to put my fingers right down here so it doesn't move. And what I do is I pop it right here in the middle with my finger and then slide my finger up and down. Now we're only going to be doing this right now to cut this piece of paper right down the middle. We only need half of a sheet for making our project today. So I'm going to cut it right on the fold with my scissors. Because my paper is so stiff, it is a little difficult to cut it, which is good. That shows that it's a good piece of paper. All right, so once I'm done cutting, I'm gonna put one piece of paper off to the side, and we just need one piece of paper right now. So I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I'm gonna make it tall, and I'm gonna fold. Same thing, I wanna definitely line up the bottom of my paper. Slide my finger up till it pops right here in the middle. Slide my fingers across. So once I've done that, now we're going to go in and we're gonna cut a little notch in the center of this. And this is gonna be the area of the paper that pops up. So you can kind of see that little piece right there off to the side. So I'm gonna put my paper like this. I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna find the center on the folded side right over here. And I'm just gonna find the center between the top and the bottom, make a light little dot right where the center is. And we're going to make a dot on either side of that center. So about one finger away from that dot. So I'm gonna turn my paper like that. So one finger away from that dot, I'm gonna make a little line right on the fold and then one finger away from the dot on the other side. I'm gonna make a little line. And then I'm gonna turn my paper back this way. So what we're gonna be doing is cutting a little notch into the, the card. So right here, I'm gonna draw a straight line. 
And I'm going to draw another straight line. Now you want to make sure that these are fairly straight because we're going to be cutting them. And they need to be the same length. So when you set your pencil like this, they should line up and they should be the same length. So that's really important to make sure that they are the same length. And then I'm going to take my scissors. I'm not going to worry about that center dot. I'm going to cut right down those two lines. I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm going to snip this line here and this line here. Now, once I've cut those two lines, I'm going to be folding this little flap. Up. So I'm going to lay my paper down on the table. And I'm going to ask you to please try to keep your paper on the table as you're folding it. So I find it's easier to fold it down. So I'm going to put my finger right here in between where those two cuts are. And I'm very carefully going to start to bend this paper right where those two cuts are. So if you're using watercolor paper, it's very stiff. If you're using cardstock, it's also stiff. If you're using construction paper, it won't be quite as stiff. I'm going to flip my card over and bend it back the other way. So you're going to notice that I keep flipping it back and forth. And then just kind of press on that fold. So once I've done that, now I'm going to take my card and I'm going to pop that fold in. So I'm just going to push it with my thumb. So it goes the opposite direction as the card. So I think you can see that in the camera. Let me pop it back out again so I can show you what I just did from the inside. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm popping it so that little hole is on the inside of the card. So you can see that from here now. So this, when I lay it down, looks flat. When I fold it up, it's like a little stair step. That's where our dog is going to be sitting once we create him. Okay, so now that that part is done, I'm going to go back to that other scrap of paper that we used earlier, this one, because we used to have a whole sheet, we cut it in half. Now we've made the pop-up card. Now we're going to start to design the dog. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this piece of paper in half also. And we're going to cut it again right down the middle. Like we did before. Now we're making a mini version of what we did before. So this piece of paper is going to become the dog. Now we want to make sure that the dog when it's laying in here, but the head doesn't pop out past the car. So you can see that the head is inside here, but it can't be larger than the head when it's glued, glued down to the flap. So what I need to do right now is take this piece of paper. I'm going to make it tall so it's longer. And I'm going to set it right next to the bottom of the stair step. So it's kind of resting on the flat paper. And then I'm going to fold this piece of paper back so it's a little bit shorter than the end of the card. So now when this becomes the dog's head and it pops up and down, I know that it will not be longer then the actual car, it's not going to stick out from the car. So now I'm going to open it up. I'm going to cut that piece off. Save my scraps. So now this piece is going to be my dog's head and shoulders. So now we're going to take that extra piece of paper that we just made, that little short piece cut off this extra that we don't need. Now we're going to start to create the dog's head. So the first thing we're going to do is create kind of a wide oval that does not go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to leave a little room for some shoulders. So nice and light. Now you can make his head kind of more pointed at the top. You can make his ears however you would like them to be. However, floppy you want them to be, 
or as, however long you want the ears to be. So I'm just gonna kind of create some puppy dog ears, making sure they're about the same length. So then we're gonna to start to create his muzzle. So the muzzle is this part right here where his nose is. So I'm just going to make a little rounded wide hump here that comes down and then I'm gonna lift it up right in the middle like this, kind of like a little raised edge. That's where the puppy's mouth is going to be. So I'm gonna draw a short line right here. And then I'm gonna draw a long oval on its side for his nose. Now next I'm gonna come up here and right on the sides where his muzzle area is, I'm going to start to figure out where I want to place his eyes. I'm going to start with a tiny little dot for the eyes. But I'm not going to keep those eyes. I like big eyes. So that's just my placement. I want to make sure that the nose is in the center and the eyes are evenly spaced from the center. Then I'm going to start to create the eyes. So for my dog's eyes, I'm going to be making kind of a high rainbow. It goes up and around. I'm going to do one on this side, up and around. And then I'm going to erase that pencil dot because I don't need that anymore. And now I'm going to create the actual pupil. So I'm going to make a wide half curve in a wide half curve like this. And then I'm gonna add an extra line right underneath. So that will be his colored iris. So on my dog's eye here, I gave him blue eyes. I don't know what color I'll do my puppy's eyes on this one. So I can leave my puppy looking like this. I can make my puppy have kind of fuzzy hair on top. Did you notice one ear is higher than the other? I'm gonna to need to fix that. So I'm gonna lower this ear Let's see, I'm gonna raise that one up just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna make his cheeks a little rounder on the side. He's a little fluffier. And then I'm going to create a rounded shoulder on both sides. I'm just gonna go like this, give him a little rounded shoulder. And now I'm gonna go in with my Sharpie marker and start to do the detail work. So I'm gonna be using Mr. Chubby. I also have a skinny mini marker. If you want to use a skinny mini for the tiny details, you can also use that. My skinny mini marker is one of the really tiny tips. If you have one of those, you can also use that as well. I kind of like to work with the Chubby first. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a little bit of fur on top of his head. So I'm just gonna kind of tick my pen a little bit on the top. And then I'm gonna come around and give his cheeks a little fur. And then I'm gonna give him a little bit of fur right up here where his muzzle is. And I'm not really outlining it completely. I'm just kind of putting a couple little dots of fur. Then I'm going to outline his nose, the short line underneath, and then the curve of his mouth. Next, I'm gonna go up and carefully start to ink in his eyes. So I'm gonna come up and around and around. Now you can bring that all the way down to the muzzle or you can add just a little curve of a cheek. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna add a half circle for his eye. This will be his pupil. And when I color in his pupil, I'm gonna leave a small area up at the top for a shiny light in his eye. And you don't have to do that. And then I'm going to very carefully ink in his pupil with my marker. And 
then you can also go in and make an extra line underneath if you want to color his iris. Now you don't have to, but you can do that later. Then I'm gonna give him a little furry chin underneath. And then I'm gonna work on his puppy dog ears. I'm not gonna make his ears as fluffy. Maybe just a little fluffy on the end. And you can create whatever style dog's ears you want. And we give him some curved shoulders that are fuzzy. And then just a little tiny bit of an eyebrow up above. Now, I think puppies look really cute with little tiny eyelashes, but you do not have to add those. And then, once we're done, we're going to go in with our magic rub or the end of your pencil and carefully erase your pencil lines. So now I'm going to take my puppy and I'm going to decide whether I want to use crayons for coloring or whether I want to paint. So you can use either one, colored markers, crayons, colored pencils. So I'm going to be using a little watercolor for mine. And depending upon what colors that you have in your watercolor set, I have a light brown, so I'm going to add a little water to my puppy. And if I did him light brown, he could be like a golden retriever. If I did him a different color, he would be a different type of dog, maybe like a terrier. So I could keep him all light brown. But I think mine's going to be kind of a mixed dog. So I don't really know what colors I'm going to create him yet. I'm just going to kind of play. So my colors are going on very nice and light. I'm just using a little bit of water and I'm painting with the paint that floats on top of my watercolor set. We've talked about that before in my other painting lessons. So you never want to jam your paintbrush down into the paint. You now, if you're using crayons right now, you're coloring your dog. Or you can use colored pencils or markers. Also color his chest and his chin. And then I do have a darker brown in my watercolor set. If you don't have a darker brown, you could also mix in another color. So I'm going to add a little bit of darker brown to his ears. So once you're done and you've decided all the colors you want your dog to have, then you have to decide what color you want the nose to be. You could do a dark brown nose, you could color it with crayons, you could use colored pencils. It's really up to you. So I could go in even with a black crayon. Now I could color the nose with a crayon. So in these little tiny spots, sometimes it's easier just to use a colored pencil or a crayon and color the iris with the crayon. When you're all finished with your dog, then you're going to cut it out. So you want to cut very carefully. And now if your picture is really, really wet, you can wait a few minutes and then come back and cut it out. So when I cut, I like to chunky cut first. So when I'm chunky cutting, I'm just cutting the big sections away first. So I'm just kind of going around here and getting rid of these big pieces. So I call this chunky cut. I'm not trying to get into the corners, just getting rid of all the excess paper that we don't need. Okay, so now that I've chunky cut, I can go in and get those closer spots. 
with my scissors. That's good enough. Now I'm gonna go and get my card. And this is where my dog is going to be glued down. So here is the fold. I'm gonna set my dog on the fold of that flap for now, because I now need to design his paws that are in front of him and his shoulders. So from here, holding my little card down right here, the first thing we need to do are draw his paws coming forward. So I'm going to kind of make these two lines coming out a little bit more on an angle, but they have to match up with that shoulder that we are going to be gluing down a little later. So I'm setting this right here on the fold, where that folded step is on the bottom. And now I'm going to draw his paws. So the first thing I do is I draw a straight line from the middle of the paper right here down like this. And that's gonna help me create his chest and his paws evenly spaced. So from that spot, now I'm going to draw one paw from this side over. So my paw is just gonna be a big wide oval. And you want to make sure that this oval is flat on the bottom and kind of big. I mean, not gigantic because puppies have bigger feet. And I'm going to draw a matching one on this side and try to make them about the same size. So once I've done that, then I'm going to draw a curved line and then a big space between it and a curved line on this side. So these are gonna be his toes. And we can match this one, doing the same. And now I can erase this line. I don't need this anymore. That was just there to help us center those paws. And then we're gonna draw just a few little lines for his chest fur. And then of course, this is going to be furry too. We'll do that with our marker. So now I'm going to move this up just a little bit. And now I'm going to mark that with my Sharpie marker that we used earlier. So I'm going to come in here and mark this. Mark this side. And then for his feet, I'm going to make his feet more furry. So I'm going to go in and just take Pen, give him a little fur on the top and a little bit around the side of his toes. And then I'm going to furry up his middle foot, his middle toe, and outline it and match the other side. So I give him a little fur on the top, come back around the other side. Add a little fur to those center. Big toe. And then right back here, a little bit in between, that would be the bottom of his chest. So you'll see he's going to sit like that. Okay. Then I did a couple little lines here and here just for some chest fur. So now I can go in and I can paint this to match this. So whatever colors you used for coloring or painting earlier, you want to do them as best you can to match. So I'm gonna be using my paint again, the same color that I used before, just a light thin coat so it matches. I'm gonna paint right underneath this line here because we're gonna be gluing the head right there. just a little water to lighten my color. You don't ever have to use white paint. You can just use water to thin your color out and make it lighter. And I don't want any big puddles. I really want this to dry pretty quickly. I'm just adding a little bit more paint. And if you're using crayons or colored pencils, just figuring out 
making sure that the body and the feet match the colors that you use for the head. You kind of want it to look seamless when it's together on the card. So when it's sitting here, it, it should make sense. Now, I also added a different shade of brown earlier, so I need to make sure that my dog on the bottom has that color in her corner also. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this darker brown that I used earlier and make sure that that's also somewhere on the bottom so that it matches. So let's check that out. What do you think? Pretty close. Now I can take the two while they're side by side and even blend them more by just holding my picture right here so that the colors are really seamless. Now at this point, I'm gonna show you one more trick. Now you don't have to do this next step, but if you want to, it's really simple. So we will be gluing our puppy's head on this bottom stair step, not the top one, just the bottom one, because the top one has to be able to move. So if you're done, you can glue this on now, but wait, you might want to add a dog bone in your dog's mouth. You want him to be holding a dog bone. It's just an added little detail that you can do. So if you want to do something like that, what you're gonna need to do is cut along the bottom edge of the top lip. Now, the way I did that is I actually cut a cut right up the middle, right here, and then I cut one side of the mouth and one side of the mouth. So let me show you what I did. I went right here and I slid him right up the middle here, very carefully. And then I took my scissors and I cut along right underneath that black line of his mouth. And I'm only going a little way. I don't want to cut this whole piece off. So I have to be kind of careful right there. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you don't want to cut all the way to the edge. Now later, you could take up even a little piece of tape and tape this back once you put the little dog bone in his mouth and no one will even notice it. So once it's there, it really doesn't show. And then you can go in and you can stick a little dog bone or even a little Valentine part would be super cute in his mouth also. So now you can go in and design some type of prop to put in his mouth. It just can't hang below this line because it's got to fold down. Now I can design a skinny little dog bone to go in his mouth. So I'm going to go with my pencil first and I'm just going to figure out a long bone that's not too wide that's going to have kind of a heart shape on the end and heart shape on the end here. And then I can go in and sketch it in with my marker. So I usually sketch things in a pencil first, just to kind of get an idea. And you can leave it like that, or you could go in and you could put some hearts. I'm using my skinny marker for the hearts inside. And then you can color this using your colored pencils, or you can go in and paint the little hearts. They're kind of small for painting, but you can. You could use crayons for coloring them. And I also want to add a little pop of shadow in there as well. So let me show you what the markers are like. Some markers are pretty too. So you can pop a little shadow in the bone by just taking a little bit of blue crayon, light blue or light blue paint. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of light blue paint here that I've really watered down. I'm gonna do it real fast. 
And I can just go in and run a little bit of light blue paint along the base of it for shadow. So I'm gonna go in now and cut out my dog bone. Remember, chunky cut first. So once you cut out your dog bone, or whatever you decided your dog's gonna be called in his mouth, now we can go in and tuck it underneath his mouth right here. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to make sure you figure out, do you want it kind of hanging out of his mouth like this? Do you want it resting underneath his lips like this? Now, if you want it resting underneath, you might have to cut it up a little higher. So I'm gonna cut this curving in just a little higher right here. I'm still leaving that edge, but I'm just kind of leaving a little bit more of a fold there so I can tuck it underneath. See how I did that? So I didn't cut the shoulders off. I just cut it a little bit higher right there so I can slip my little dog bone in his mouth. And then I will glue it down. So once I figured out that it fits, I have to make sure that this dog bone does not go below this area here. So I'm gonna have to slip this a little bit more on this side also. So I'm gonna take my scissors, go in there and cut it up just a little higher. Tuck in my dog bone. Oh, that fits way better now. See that? See how it come up quite a bit higher? And now I can glue the dog bone into my puppy's mouth. So I'm just gonna go right here and put a little bit of glue stick on the back. I'm gonna use my purple glue today just so you can see the glue on the back of my bone. I'm gonna stick that right here near my puppy's mouth. Super cute. And then it's time now to glue his head onto this folded part right here. So it's very important that you do not put any glue on this top step, only on the side. So if you're looking at it here, the only place that's gonna get glue is this step right here. So I'm gonna take my glue stick, making sure I'm not putting any on that top step, and I'm gonna put the glue just on the side. Make a good amount of glue there. Really stick down. And I'm gonna carefully line up my dog's shoulders so they line up with my outline and press them down. And it should pop open and shut now. Okay, that's working good. So from here, if you need to, once you've laid it down, if there's any part that's still kind of showing, you can just go back in and touch it up with your paintbrush. So every once in a while, you might not have painted it all the way. So you can just go in and touch it up, whatever you need to touch up with your paintbrush, or with your markers, colored pencils, whatever. Okay, so now we got our puppy sitting there. So now it would be kind of fun to figure out what do we want our dog little slogan to be. So in mine, I wrote the word, I dig you. And then I splattered a bunch of paint like he's been playing in the mud. So let me show you how I did that. I wrote the word with just using a pencil. So I is gonna start over here. Dig. And I'm gonna start by just making the letters kind of a little bit far apart because I'm gonna thicken up my, lay, my letters in a minute. You. And then once I have written them like that, 
Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make my letters a little bit fatter using my marker. So what I'm going to do is kind of go around the pencil. See how I'm not touching the pencil line? I'm going right next to it. So there's my letter I. And then for my D, I'm going to go around the pencil line and also the inside. So my pen is just next to the pencil line. even on the O. Now once I've written my letters, then you can go in and you can change the lettering. You can make it darker. You can outline it even a second time. Sometimes I outline the bottom of the letters just one more time just to give them a little bit darker outline at the very bottom. And then you can go in and erase your pencil lines. Magic web eraser or the end of your pencil, whatever you've got handy. Because we're using a sharpie marker, it doesn't bleed or it doesn't smear as long as that ink has had a few seconds to dry. So now for doing your lettering, um, you can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, markers, you can color in your lettering. And then we're going to get ready to paint once we're done. So I'm going to color my letters. I want you to color in your letters and then meet me back here. We'll start to do our ground. All right, my letters are colored in. Now I'm going to decide what do you want to do for the sky behind your dog. So you could use markers. You could use paint. You don't have to make a blue sky. You could do hearts. You could do confetti. It's really up to you. You could cut out hearts and glue those in the background. That would be really cute. The way I did mine is I just turned my paper like this and I made a really light wash of blue. Purple would be really pretty too. And I just did blue and I just pulled my paintbrush kind of like the rays of the sun away from my puppy's head like this. And I just used a really washed out blue. Not really bright, just kind of soft and subtle. Another thing that you could do is go in with a crayon and you could draw with a white crayon all over your background. You could make little hearts or swirls or polka dots and then when you watercolor over it later the crayon will be resisting the watercolor wash and the white crayon will show through that would be really pretty you could do that as well so now i'm just going to go in with another shade of blue and just play in here Sort of my background. Now I have to decide what am I going to do for the ground. Well, I think since it says I dig you that he should be kind of laying in mud. So I'm going to go in with some brown paint and I'm going to paint a little wash of brown kind of around his body. Now I want this brown to look different than the color of my dog. So if you made a black dog, you won't have any trouble. Or if you made a white dog, you're not gonna have any trouble. But for me, I already made a brown dog. So I wanna make sure that this brown is a different shade of brown. I'm gonna paint it right up to his feet. And just kind of match it around. And you could paint it all the way to the very back if you wanted to, I didn't. I just kind of painted it a little bit around his feet. So I'm gonna let, let you decide how you wanna do that. And I'm gonna go in and make it a little bit darker. So just a second coat, just 
just near him. So it's kind of almost like a shadow. And then I'm gonna kind of fade it by just adding water at the bottom. And now we're gonna get ready if you have watercolor. Now, if you don't have watercolor, you won't be doing this. Uh, but you could also kind of attempt to do it by taking a marker and tapping a brown marker. It might kind of give you the same effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be making some spots of mud. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start with a light shade of brown if you have a light shade first. If you don't, just go straight in with brown. And I'm gonna get a good amount of water first on top of my brown. So I'm starting with my light brown because I have two shades of brown in my set. And I'm gonna stir it up. And I'm gonna zoom my camera out a little bit so you can see what I'm gonna get ready to do. So first, I'm gonna clear my area. I want to have a napkin near me because I don't want to put any mud on my dog's head. So I'm going to set this napkin over his face just to kind of block from what I'm about to do here. And then I'm going to first tap my, my paper so I don't have too much paint on it. And then I'm going to grab my pencil and what I'm going to do is lightly tap my pencil. Start making some splatters of mud. All right, so that was just my first coat of light brown. Now I'm going to go in and add some water. I have a darker brown. Now if you don't have a darker brown, you could add a drop of black to the brown that you have to darken it up to make a new shade of brown. So now I'm going to go in with my darker brown. Now the first drip is going to be too big on my picture. So I usually will tap that over my water bowl just to get rid of those first couple big drips because I don't want a big flop. I'm going to go in and tap my darker brown. Make sure you get some on his paws too. There we go. And you can continue to do this as much as you want. You don't really need that much mud on your dog. And when you're all finished, you want to very carefully re-pop your card. Now, you're going to have to wait for this to dry before you mount it. And when you are ready to mount your card, you want to be very careful that you mount with glue all of the top and the bottom, but definitely not this space right here where the hole is. You don't want to get any glue there. So you want to cover all of this with your glue stick and this side too. And then you're going to choose a background paper. It can be white, it can be red. I'll let you decide. And it can be a little bit longer or taller than the card that you made. And you can lay it down and glue it down like this, and then you're gonna refold that outside card. Once it's glued down, you'll refold it. So then you'll end up with a cute pop-up puppy card. So I hope you had fun today learning how to make our pop-up pup Valentine card. And if you make one of these cards, would you please send me a picture of your puppy card to rtorres at LC usd.net. Hope you had fun. I'll see you for our next lesson. Bye-bye.